Yeah. Thanks for stopping by. Come and say hi, it's good vibes. Keep your head up, let it stay high. We be going hard since we were like, yeah, hi. Let the daylight shine in. You rocking with Shanice. You know who she be, autoimmune disease. Warrior, reality TV, star breaking barriers. Tell it like it is. Actress, writer, survivor, fighter, director. Come ride with the illest in the building, man. Love, peace. Drummer Queen vlog with Shanice. Everybody, it's your girl Drama Queen. I know it's been a minute, but leave it to season eight of 60 Days In to get me out of my hiatus. I just literally, like maybe 15 minutes ago, just got caught up on episode four and five. So people have been emailing me and sending me messages. Are you going to review season eight? And so, yes, I am. I was working on a movie that I wrote, directed, and produced, and we actually just filmed it last weekend. So I have a little bit more time now before the next project starts. So yes, I will be reviewing it, but I will be putting my opinions on this video for episodes one through five and just making it really really quick because I have some notes uh very few notes from the first few episodes the notes get deeper as I go um to episode four and five so we'll just do everything together and then starting next week I'll start reviewing it every week because I think it's getting ready to get real good real good next week so Again, I am going to be reviewing season eight of 60 Days In. Now, let me put a disclaimer in here. Um, I'm going to do the reviews a little different than I did for season seven. The main difference is I'm going to be looking at things and discussing things from a viewer point of view and then a past participant point of view because those point of views are completely different now for those that don't know I was a fan of 60 days in um I watched season one through five before being an actual participant I am not one that was looking to be on 60 days in that was not the show that I thought that they were advertising for for the casting call However, I was a fan of the show. I thought the show was very interesting. I thought that it uh, captivated me to see, you know, just everyday people volunteer to go to jail. I thought the people were nuts. And then season six, I became one of those people that I thought were nuts. So here we are in season eight, and I am going to um, just review it because there were some things that as I was looking at this season, I was thinking... I'm thinking this way because I'm a past participant and I know kind of the ins and outs and that's not something that maybe the average viewer knows. And so that's kind of the way I'm going to be reviewing season eight for seasons one through, or not season, I'm sorry, episodes one through five. And then starting next week uh, when I do my weekly reviews and discussions on 60 Days In, it's going to be from a viewer point and then a past participant. So the first thing I kind of want to go over is just the overview. I got notes written down and I have notes on my computer. So you may see me kind of going back and forth. Um, the first thing that I want to say about season eight is I was very impressed with the sheriff, uh, Sheriff Paula Dance. I was impressed because she was the first African-American female sheriff. Now, here we are in 2023. Um and in her area, she was the first African-American female sheriff. I, I, I was intrigued just by that. Um, as the season progressed, I found her to be like most of the sheriffs when participants either give them a debriefing or they drop out. And even when I did, when I was giving feedback, you know, the common answer or rebuttal is, well, it's jail. Okay, yeah, that's true. We know it's not the Holiday Inn, the Hilton, all of that, duh. But there are some basic rights that need to be met. And there are some things that were happening in every single season of the jail that 
they wouldn't approve of even if they were an inmate. There was no reason in my season, season six, that I should have been given bloody sheets. That's nasty as hell. It's, it's not sanitary. I hate bodily fluids. It disgusted the hell out of me, but I made it do what it do because it was jail. But that's not the right mentality to have when you are inviting people into your jail to let you know what issues there are. That I just that that attitude and that demeanor and that rebuttal, it just makes my skin crawl. And it's like, can we come up with something new for season nine, please? So if you know, whatever jail that they're looking at, if there's going to be a season nine, if the sheriff, the 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 uh, producers uh, of 60 Days in, cast them, let them know, can we come up with something else besides it's jail? Because that's getting old, because there are things that just should not happen. Um, you, you should be able to get basic hygiene things and not have to wait for commissary. If you want a specific brand, yeah, you, you upgrade when you get commissary, but there's no reason that these people should be in this jail and not be given when they are a process through, they should be given a toothbrush, toothpaste, soap, a dish, and not dish towel, a washcloth, a towel, deodorant, basic hygiene products. I don't care that it's jail. You know, there's no reason why in this season that the gentlemen are in this big open space. And, I, you know, one of the things that I was thinking as a participant, and I'm probably sure that a lot of people were thinking as a viewer is you spend money on your commissary and you buy things. And then you go do an interview or you have to go to medical or whatever. And your commissary is just open to everybody. You know, I had a notebook that I did writing. I trusted my roommate, Tiffany. She had stuff that she had that was private. I respected her. She respected me. I respected her space. She respected my space. But you can't say that when it's such an open area like that. Like, and then it's no supervision, you know, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, so... One of the things that this is just kind of general notes at first that I thought was very interesting about every single participant that has entered this facility is, and this was kind of the thing for season seven as well, is everybody was going crazy about the 23 and one for quarantine. Well, guess what? Let me get a little close. When this little beautiful face you see right here and the participants that were on the season with me at Etowah County Detention Center located in Alabama, there was no quarantine. There was no COVID yet because when we filmed, we filmed in 2019 in the spring and in the spring, summer of 2019. So there was no COVID. And guess what? <laughs> we were on 23 and 1 the majority of the days. I can't speak for the men, but if I remember correctly, I think the men were locked up as well. But I know on the women's side, because we only had one pod where the men had multiple um, units. We only had one unit for the women when we were locked up. But we were locked up 23 and 1, especially when Miss Williams was the CEO. Um, it just really depended on the mood of the officers. And the majority of the time, if I had to assess a percent, and I really probably should have called Ashley because she's younger than me. And I'm like, I don't remember life has been like thing. So I don't remember every single detail. But if I had to assess a percent to how often we were on 23 and 1 when we did season 6, I would say maybe 70% of the time. 70% of the time. There was an officer um, that did not give her consent to be filmed, so I can't say her name, but I love her to death. I've spoken to her since being out. She no longer is at the jail. She left shortly after we did. She was phenomenal. But when she worked, she made sure that we, you know, had a little bit more time because if you're locked up for 23 and 1, you, you can go crazy. And that's the thing that I want to say. 
um, especially to season eight participants. There were a lot of season eight participants that, you know, were talking about their mission and how they have a purpose and how they're not going to tap out or their family member was there and they couldn't tap out. Here's the thing. Um, I'm going to start off and talk about Charlotte. I absolutely love her energy. I loved her, but I told my manager from day one, Charlotte ain't gonna make it. And he argued me up and down, baby. Argued me up and down. I was like, she ain't gonna make it. And I could tell because been there, done that. Even though she had been in jail before for a year and a day, that was you serving your time in the privacy the privacy of yourself, not for the whole world to see. That's the thing that a lot of people don't understand is that, A, there's so many emotions that you're going through as a past participant and being on the season, even though I felt like I was as mentally prepared as I could be for the situation, you never can get all the way mentally prepared if you've never been there. Um, plus the thing is you are trying to remember your cover story. You're trying to sell your cover story and you're doing all of this in front of the actual inmates because your life depends on you being able to sell that cover story. And that's when we're going to start talking about Jamil because mm, he jacked his cover story up from the beginning. And instead of trying to be, you know, talking about, you know, why he's in there and how he, you know, has a purpose and he's not going to drop out. He should have been spending that time learning that cover story because I had my cover story back and forth. Baby, now I can still tell you my cover story. Why am I in here? <laughs> For assault? Well, who'd you assault? My boyfriend? Well, what happened? Oh, we was playing cards. He started talking shit and he hit me. And I just grabbed the next thing that I could find, which was the Ciroc bottle. And I went upside that head. Oh, I sold that story, baby. And that's why if I didn't, especially the edits that I got, if they thought that I was on the show, baby, they would have tried to show that and make that my storyline. But that wasn't the case because you have to be prepared. However, back to my main point. I wish people would understand that you don't know how you're going to react to something until you're in there. You are in jail. You're trying to sell your cover story. You're trying to, um, for me, when I walked in, I wanted to know where all the exits were. I had the benefit, sort of benefit, but not benefit because I was nervous as hell. I was, after training, I was um, not put into the jail for over a week. So once I knew what jail I was in and time was ticking, I came home, I had my um, laptop with me. And so I started Googling the jail. I wanted to see all of the inmates. I'm a very strategic person. I like to be proactive versus reactive. So I'm researching all of the women to see, okay, which women are here on violent crime so I can keep that in the back of my mind so I can kind of watch out for them. And so I already knew about Tiffany before Tiffany was introduced to me as my roommate because I had read about her. Um, but you, you, you come in there, you're trying to learn where all the exits are, learn the people that, you know, you can't really trust people because you're in jail, but you have to trust some people because you don't know nobody there. So you're there to get intel and you are there to, um, survive. And so you're going to have to put a little bit of trust into some people. So then you got to figure out how to do all that. Again, you're doing all this on national television, international television. And not only are you doing that, you're doing all of this and you're trying to survive. And you know, at the end of the day that you're being recorded for a show. And so then in the back of your mind, you're wondering, how is this footage going to be manipulated? Is it going to be shown accurately or not? In my case, a lot of my stuff was not shown accurately. And I knew that that was a potential. And so you are dealing with all of this stuff and you are being filmed. For those that had spent time in jail before, it wasn't filmed 
for an international television show for everybody to be critical of your every single move and sometimes not even a move you made a manipulated move by editing and so i find it interesting that you know jacob he came on and you know his he, i think his stepfather um i'm moving kind of ahead on my notes but um let me see if I can find it. Yeah, his dad was in jail. And, you know, um, one of the things that his dad told him is that, you know, don't be a punk. That was, that was some of the advice that his dad gave him. And I just think it's different when you know you are being filmed. So, for example, for me being a past participant, and knowing that I needed to survive in jail, one of the things that they didn't show you was my relationship with Angel. So they made it seem like Angel punked me out of my pee. If they had shown my relationship with Angel, y'all would have understood more why I didn't have a problem peeing for Angel. Number one, I knew before I went in there that nothing in jail is free, just like nothing in life is free. And they tell you that going in is, you know, don't let people do special, you know, favors for you because you're going to have to pay some type of way. Angel got me commissary shipped in from another state where I was able to get gluten-free commissary. I'm going to say that again. Angel helped me get commissary shipped in where I was able to order specifically gluten-free things. So you need me to pee for you? Yeah. The struggle where, you know, I think it was, a, I don't know if this showed on the actual episode or if this was one of the YouTube videos where I was just like trying to figure out every reason not to is because I knew I was being filmed for a show. So you have the inmate side of me knowing that, hey, nothing in life is free. Angels had my back. I got to have her back. But then you have the side of me that is an educator and I know I'm being filmed and I know, ooh, this ain't right. I also know that anything that you do inside of the jail as a participant that is an actual crime, you can be held liable for. So you got all those things going on in your mind. You think you know what you're going to do and how you're going to react to it until you are there in the moment. Trust me. That's why I never said anything negative about any of the pre previous participants because, you know, being on Family Feud, I would watch Family Feud sometimes and I'd be like, dude, that was like a simple question. I'm like staring at the TV like, dude, really? Like you couldn't get that? Like that was simple. But when you're on stage and those hot lights are beaming down on you, you got the audience there, you got Steve Harvey and your heart is boop, 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 and the timer's going. It's a little different than being at home on your couch, chilling, eating some Doritos and drinking a Sprite. Just a little different. You can't judge it. No, 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 no. I knew that. I had the benefit of knowing that, but a lot of people don't know. So that's one of the things that I want to say. Um, about the judgments of people that are watching as just viewers is you got to give people a little slack when you are watching 60 Days In because there are a lot of things that you are contending with and you think you're going to be able to do it, but it's very difficult when you're trying to think of all of those things. What's morally right? What do I need to do to protect myself? How do I want to be viewed on TV? Well, I'm portraying myself this way, but are they going to manipulate the, the editing? It's just a lot of different things that you have to consider. So moving right along. Um, so quarantine is just funny to me that that's been the thing that everybody bitches about in 23 and 1 and I guess season six, we was just some OGs because we didn't know nothing about no COVID, no quarantine. We was just 23 and one. It was what it was. Was it mentally draining and exhausting and hard to deal with? Absolutely. Had a lot of time to think and a lot of time to process things that I didn't want to process before when you're sitting there and all you have is time. You got to deal with yourself. You got to deal with your demons. You got to deal with your weaknesses. You got to deal with your strengths. I mean, it is what it is. 
All right, so let me hurry up and dive in because I ain't got that much time and I ain't trying to make this video no hour long. I got about, mm, about 15, 20 more minutes. And so we're going to make this do what it do. Jamil. Mm. I found it very interesting that on my season, they try to make me look like a chronic complainer when I was going in bringing awareness on celiac disease and the way they kind of chop stuff up to make it look like I'm following people and being a stalker. Hey, I have celiac. I'm allergic to this and I can eat this and I can't. Not the way it happened. However, I will say this has been a very complaining season to me already. Like when Jamil was like, I mean, we don't have no entertainment. Like it's jail. I will say I agree with that statement on that. It's I didn't go in looking for entertainment. I was glad that my cell was right by the TV, thank God. Even though I didn't control the TV or have the remote control, I was glad that when the TV was on, if I wanted to stand up, I could always see it and watch the, the, the shows. So that was um, a good thing. I just was always nervous that I was going to be in the jail, filming 60 Days In, and my episode of Family Feud was going to come on. That was one of my biggest, biggest, biggest fears. And we watch Family Feud sometimes. So that was one of my biggest fears. But um, when Jamil first went in, I was like, he ain't going to make it. I was like, he, he just seems like he's doing this for entertainment purposes. He is a musician, so he has a brand that um, this platform can definitely help him grow in. Um, he seemed very nervous to me from the beginning. Um, I did like the fact that they pulled him first because he seemed to have that like, yeah, yeah, I can do this. I did like why he was doing it, his purpose. When you go in there and you have a purpose, actually, I think most people that do 60 Days In, this is not a regular reality show or docu-series, documentary. You do have to have some type of passion or purpose in order to volunteer to put yourself in danger and go to jail everybody i just I, I i wholeheartedly believe that but even though i felt like he wanted to inspire people and, and and be there for those of his friends that are no longer here i was touched by that but i felt he was a little 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 cocky um the jail i was very impressed with the body scanner I thought that was good. Um, I think that, you know, I think some of the people said they still were, you know, had to cough, but they went through the body scanner. Um, it's funny, a couple of the, the participants said when the doors closed, they felt like a criminal. I can ID. That is how I felt. When the doors closed and I went in there and, you know, first got in there and I was in the processing, that's when shit got real for me. And I was like, oof. In my head, being in the, you know, entertainment industry, um, I heard action. And I just went into another mode. Everybody asked me, how did you do that? I have grown men. Like, how did you do that? And I'm like, the person you see now is not the person that went in there. I had to be a completely different person and get my head in, in a totally different place, even to the point of gaining weight. I had to be somewhere else mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally to be able to do that. And I know I'm not the only participant that, that's done that. So let's talk about uh, Charlotte, stay-at-home uh, mom, ex-inmate, five kids. In 2015, she spent one year and one day in jail. Her roommate was going with, uh, through withdrawals and that scared her. One of the reasons she said that she uh, tapped out early. I will say uh, experiencing someone going through withdrawal is like something I've never experienced in my life. It's very difficult. Um, I didn't know what it was at first. I was like, because Tiffany was a trustee at the time. So she was out and I got out to eat lunch or something. And I was like, dude, what is going on with old girl? She's tweaking. Because I'd never been around that. And so then she told me like she was you know, jumping up and down and yelling in her sleep and screaming and sweating and using the bathroom. And it was just weird. It just made me feel uneasy. I didn't know if she was going to like 
spaz out and try to choke me or try to attack me in her sleep. I, it just wasn't a restful sleep because you don't know what's going to happen. They don't know what's going to happen. And so um, I think for people that have been past inmates before, you have that thought in the back of your mind, like, I don't have to be here. And so knowing that, I just could tell that Charlotte wasn't going to make it. And my manager just literally argued me up and down and we see Charlotte didn't make it. Uh, Jacob was impressed with his quick intake. Um, <laughs> Jacob cracked me up with the inmate saw the microphone and he gave the signal. He's like, I'm not going back in there. I'm not going. No, I'm not going. Mm -mm. There's no, 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 mm -mm, not doing it. No, no way. Mm -mm. Uh, maybe they need to stop hiring Jacobs because we, I love my Jacob that was on the season with us, but I saw a lot of similarities and I just could tell by the energy that he was not going to be able to make it because you have to be mentally strong. Like I, I literally, let me see. There were, I had five months from when I started talking to 60 days in to when I went in. So out of the five months, I had three months because I said no several times because of celiac disease. I said, absolutely not. They did their due diligence and did research, asked questions, went to the jail, talked to the sheriff, talked to the nurses, let people know that I did have celiac. Because, you know, someone was like on one of my YouTube, and I haven't even approved the video yet, but I've seen it or the comment. Oh, I'm not trying to be insensitive. There's no way you had celiac because there could be a lawsuit. Clearly, you don't know anything about the 40-something, 30-something pages that I had to sign to go in there. Yes, they were well aware that I had celiac disease, but they couldn't treat me any differently than any of the other participants because just as um, the inmates saw the microphone in Jacob's cell and Jacob was like, I'm good, if they would have made it noticeably you know, obvious that I was getting treated differently than I would have been a target. And although I knew that I had celiac, they knew that I had celiac, it was still a process that had to be taken. So I was not a target. And I'm thankful for that process because although I had people that assumed that I was on the show, there was, I wasn't in harm's way like other participants were. Um, We, okay, so I said we didn't have water, let the ice, but oh, so, you know, that's one of the complaints is water. We had to buy our water. We didn't get like a container of water. I remember we used to get the little, I call them like Gatorade. It's not Gatorade, but the little containers, like the sports thing with the little spout. And our spouts had mold and mildew in them. So there was just a point. I just stopped getting something to drink unless I had stuff from commissary. But for us, for the last um, maybe two weeks, they were, we were the last, the women were the last ones to get our commissary. And I couldn't get bottled water. We didn't have water. So we did have ice. So we would take the ice and let the ice melt, and that's how we would get the water. So, you know, I see a little bit of differences um, and similarities in the uh, seasons. Um, Steven, former CEO, I thought from the beginning Steven was cocky and I did not think he was going to make it. Another argument that I had with my manager. I said, I don't think he's going to make it. I said, it's just the energy. I'm an energy filler. I just, you know, and then being a past participant and not only being a past participant, but being a past participant that has watched the next season, I can just tell different behaviors. And I was like, yeah, no, he's not going to make it. Um, Sarah, I um, I enjoy Sarah. Let me go to my, my um, computer notes here.
Okay, so Sarah, 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 where are you? Oh, here we go. So Sarah is an ex-drug addict and Heather was her roommate in quarantine and was going through withdrawals. Um, one of the things that I was a little angry with is why women are just it's just so blatant the different ways that we're treated. So it was, we were made aware that the women did not have access to the outdoors, whereas the men did. I, I just, I call BS on that. It's like women, if women need that outdoor space more than men for the simple fact that we bleed every month and we go through emotional things and roller coasters that men don't go through. And it's even worse in jail. Um, Sarah reminds me a little bit of Ashley and Sarah reminds me a little bit of me. And I'll talk about that for a couple seconds. Sarah reminded me of me because I felt so bad knowing that I had a job to do, but I ended up building these relationships. Everyone asked me if I talked to Tiffany. I've not. I've heard a lot of things that went on after I left and Tiffany was back in the jail and unfortunately had some things that happen and it's just probably not a good idea. I would love to talk to her, but the fact that I was on the show and that may have caused her some issues, it's, it's just not a great idea. It doesn't feel good to build relationships based off a lie. I don't like that. I don't, I don't build relationships in real life off of a lie. And I didn't think that it would bother me as much because it's, it was like, I'm here to do a job. I build relationships, but it is, I'm, I'm here to do a job. But if you have a heart and you're an empathetic or sympathetic person, it's very difficult. Um, you don't expect to care for the girls as much and you do feel bad. Um, and there is a feeling of guilt. Um, I was very impressed with Sarah uh, getting her paperwork or requesting her paperwork for the WEAR program. Um, the reason she reminds me of Ashley, she, I said in my notes, she reminds me of Ashley times 10 is because she's always singing and always happy and always on a mission to help young ladies. She also seemed very eager, um, to witness fights. 